of the projects that we've been building up to this point have had pretty much one common theme, and that's using vacuum tubes in the sense of computing, building flip-flops or building circuits that can ultimately lead up to building a some form of computing piece of equipment, which I think would be awesome. But throughout all of this, I've done a really good job of ignoring the one thing that vacuum tubes are primarily used for, and that is audio. Uh, and I, I've ignored this for a couple reasons. One, I, I'm pretty hard of hearing in one ear, and I just don't have a good sense of what makes an amplifier sound good as opposed to what makes an amplifier sound bad. Uh, but I was sitting at the computer the other day and looking at some vacuum tube stuff online and I just suddenly got this burning desire to build a vacuum tube amplifier. And not just any vacuum tube amplifier, to build a low voltage vacuum tube amplifier. Because everything we've done up to now has been low voltage. And so I think it would be really fun to build an amplifier that's just running on like 24 volts. So that's what I want to do today. I want to give that a shot. So uh, I have a couple ideas. Let's hop over to the bench and get started. Now, when talking about amplifiers, we always refer to them in terms of watts, and this is how much power they can put out. And I normally don't do any math on this channel because I'm absolutely horrendous at math, but there's one very important formula that we need to keep in mind while talking about amplifiers, and that is uh, this, P equals VI, or power equals volts times amps. And since we're running such a low voltage, in order to get a decent amount of power out of our amplifier, we would have to bump up the amperage. But uh, vacuum tubes are inherently low amperage devices. And this is why we see uh, vintage tube amplifiers running several hundred volts on the plates because they're low amperage devices. So if we want more power, we really have to crank up that voltage. And as a matter of fact, I've seen some amplifiers that run upwards of 700 to 800 volts, which is just insane, especially considering that we're going to try and do it with just 24 volts. Uh, so we need to keep our expectations a little bit in check because at 24 volts, we're just we're just not capable of producing a huge amount of power. But I think that we can still create something quite good, and I, I want to give that a shot. The only problem is, is when it comes to building an audio amplifier, I, I just I don't have any knowledge bouncing around in my brain. But I'm not above stealing another design, so that's what I want to do. And this is a Fender Champ Amp schematic. And the Fender Champ Amp is probably one of the simplest vacuum tube amplifier schematics that I've come across. And as a matter of fact, as simple as this schematic is, I think we can actually simplify it a bit further. So this bit all here on the bottom is just power supply stuff. So we can just ignore all of that. And these big capacitors right here are smoothing caps for the, the rectified DC that's coming out of our 5Y3 GT tube down here. And so we can just ignore all of that as well. That's uh, just all part of the power supply stuff. So we can just kind of imagine that's just going to be our 24 volts that comes in. And then over here on the input, it's got two phono inputs, uh, but really we're, we're not going to set up two different phono inputs. We're just going to run a, a single mono input because it is a mono amplifier. And so we're just going to turn that into an input with a single uh, resistor going in there. And then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. There's only one aspect of the rest of this that I, I don't really think I'm going to need to use, and that is this uh, extra line that comes all the way back over here to the cathode of this uh, second half of the 12AX7 here. And, and this is a negative feedback setup, and I just, you know, I really don't think that we're going to need that. Uh, I, I just, at the voltages that we're running at, the negative feedback is supposed to help with audio quality and really at these voltages I'm just going to be happy to get audio really and, and if it's not complete and utter trash that's a total win for me. So we're going to go ahead and eliminate that and that really makes it pretty simple. But you know it's a, it's a little hard looking at this schematic for me because I always draw the, the positive voltage at the top here and then, you know, ground on the bottom here. But we've got ground on the bottom and our positive voltage rail on the bottom. So it's a, it's a little confusing. And 
On top of that, all of these uh, resistor and capacitor values, I, I don't think are gonna work for the voltages that we're running it. I mean, a 100,000 ohm plate resistor at 24 volts is, is going to give us practically no, nothing in the way of amplification. So we need to drop that down to say 10,000 ohms like we normally do. So I went through this and had a bit of a think and I, I redrew the schematic. And so let's take a look at that. All right, and so here's what I've come up with. And you can see it's actually really, really simple. There's not even all that many resistors that we need to use, and there's only three capacitors. And so we've got three triodes set up, uh, and these two triodes are gonna be uh, in one tube. So we're gonna have ultimately two tubes. So we'll use a single dual triode, and then we'll use a single triode as our driver tube over here. So we've got a really tiny audio signal coming in here, and it goes through a 4.7 thousand ohm resistor into the grid. Uh, and then the grid is also tied low through a, a really big 100 thousand ohm resistor. And actually our cathode is tied to the ground through a 1 thousand ohm resistor. And what this does is it kind of elevates the potential of the cathode slightly above ground. So that way, anything that's moving up and down on the grid is moving up and down on the grid with relation to the cathode, which moves it to a slightly negative bias, I think, I hope. Uh, as I said, I'm not really an expert on audio amplifiers here. Uh, but the rest of this actually looks really familiar. We've got a 10,000 ohm plate resistor coming in and we've got our output coming off of the plate. This looks like the standard inverting amplifier that we've been using on all of our computing circuits. And it's really similar. And the big difference is the addition of these capacitors on the output here. And, and what those are for is that when we have an output coming off of this, this output is going to uh, be moving at a relatively high voltage to what the grid here is expecting. So maybe we're moving up and down around 10 volts or so. You know, we go down to nine volts and all the way up to 11 volts or something like that. But the grid here really wants, uh, you know, maybe negative one volt to plus one volt or something like that. So that's pretty much what this capacitor does. They're called uh, DC blocking capacitors, but that never really clicked with me as to how they work. And essentially what it is, is that as this signal goes up and down, this capacitor charges and discharges. And when it does that, it's either uh, pulling electrons or feeding electrons into this area right here, which means that the center point of this charging and discharging is now around ground. So we'll see a negative volt to a positive volt. So really all these capacitors are doing are shifting our relatively high voltage signal to a signal that rotates essentially around zero. And that's the exact same thing over here. So you can see that this second triode is set up almost identically to the first triode here. And that's because these are our two amplifier stages. So we get a really tiny signal in here. We amplify it once and we use that amplified signal into the grid here. And then we amplify it yet again into a relatively large signal that's going into the grid of our final tube. Now our final tube is set up a little differently because it's the driver tube. And so essentially we have 24 volts coming in through the coil of a transformer. And then as the grid moves up and down, that voltage can either flow through the tube to ground or it won't flow through the tube through ground. So we get a, a kind of an ebbing motion through here. And because it's a transformer, we can essentially transform that uh, low amperage, high voltage to a low voltage, high amperage. And that low voltage, high amperage is exactly what our speaker wants. So these output transformers are often massive in vintage amplifiers, and I don't have one, but I do have these tiny little transformers that I got from somewhere. I'm not exactly sure what they were intended to be used for, but they work decently well for the extremely low voltages that we're running at. But this is a fairly simple schematic, and I think it's going to be pretty simple to build on the breadboard. So let's pull that breadboard out and go ahead and get started. All right, so I've gone ahead and done just a little basic setup. I've got the dual triode set up here, and then I've got the single triode set up here. And uh, the dual triode is essentially like the 6DJ8. We have our heater on pins four and five, and then we've got the one triode here, one triode here. Now, uh, pin nine is not connected, and on our single triode, it's actually quite a bit different, but you'll also notice that pin three isn't connected. And that's because I'm using a 12BH7 for the dual triode and a 12B4A for the single triode. And I'm using these tubes for a specific reason, which we'll, we'll discover 
much later, but uh, the reason that those pins aren't connected is that's the center tap if you want to run the heaters on 6 volts. But I want to run the heaters on 12 volts, and so I'm going to have uh, 12 volts into this rail and then ground, uh, and then that 12 volts will run the heaters for both of these. And then we'll have uh, plus 24 volts here, and that's actually all the voltage that we're going to use. Alright, and the first thing I want to do is put our 4.7 thousand ohm resistor in for the grid. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do the 1000 ohm resistor for the cathode, pulling it to uh, ground. And then we also have a 100,000 ohm resistor coming off of the grid, pulling it to ground. And that's what that one is right there. And then the plate has a 10,000 ohm resistor on it going to 24 volts. And so that's what this guy will be right here. All right, and so uh, as simple as that was, that's our first triode setup. So we just need the capacitor uh, that's going to run it over to the grid of the second triode. So that's what this little guy is right here. And we're just gonna put that one in right there and hook it up into that dead spot in between the two. And then I'm gonna use a tiny little jumper to jumper that over to the grid. All right, and so now we have our input into the grid of our second triode here. And just like before, let's go from cathode uh, to, to plate. And then coming off of the plate, we have our next capacitor that just kind of runs that right out into this open space here. And that's going to be uh, our input into our third and final triode. And the input of that triode is going to be on pin two. So I've got this little yellow jumper that'll connect that up right quick. And then the cathode of that first triode is pin one. So uh, even though we've got nine pins, it's going to get a little crowded here. Um, so we'll run pin one through a 100 ohm resistor to ground, and then we have a capacitor coming off of that cathode also going to ground. All right, and that's, uh, that's cleaning it up pretty easy. Now we also have a 100,000 ohm resistor coming off of the grid to ground, which is, if you remember, that was pin two. And well, I'm kind of out of space, but it just so happens that on the 12B4A, pin two and pin uh, seven are internally connected. So I can actually just run that 100,000 ohm off of pin seven to ground. And it's the same thing as running it off of pin two. All right, and so that is uh, both tubes set up. That was by far the easiest thing we've done on the breadboard so far, so that's awesome. Uh, now we need to set up our output transformer. And so the output transformer comes off of 24 volts through the output transformer and then into the plate. And the plate on the 12B4A is pin nine here. So I'm gonna run a little jumper off of pin nine to move it over to a place where we have uh, space for our output transformer. And then the output transformer, we'll just go ahead and hook it up like so. <laughs> and I, I said they were a, it was a tiny output transformer. So, I mean, uh, even though we're running at low voltage, we, we can't actually expect too much power out of this thing. Uh, but it's, it's adorable and it fits really well on the breadboard. So I think we're going to go ahead and stick with it for now. But we need to put 24 volts into the other pin of that one. So that's going to be that one right there with this little orange jumper. All right, and so now all that we're missing is getting this side of the transformer hooked up to our speaker, but the negative side of our speaker and one side of this output transformer also go to ground. So I can actually just connect one end of that up to ground and then connect the other end of the negative end of the speaker up to ground as well. So uh, let's go ahead and run the jumpers for that right quick. All right, and so this brown jumper here is going to go into our speaker, and then the uh, opposite side of that here is going to go from our speaker into ground. So our speaker will go uh, on these two rails right here. Now for the speaker, uh, I found these absolutely adorable one and a half inch speaker drivers on Amazon, and they're, they're just, they're so cute. Uh, but it's, it, I think it's called a driver, uh, simply because it needs a case to actually become a full speaker. So it needs uh, something to encase the bottom of it to project the sound in the correct direction. Otherwise you get a really tinny sound out, out of it apparently. Um, but I, I don't have a 3D printer, but I do have, uh, toilet paper rolls. <laughs> so I made a little case for it out of a toilet paper roll here. And so that uh, seems to help the sound quite a bit. So we'll just hook that up that way. Um, and so that's, that's adorable and hilarious. <laughs>
Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our two tubes. We have a 1-2-BH7, and that's gonna be the one that plugs in for our dual triode here. And then we have our 1-2-B4A, and that's gonna be our driver tube here. All right, and that's, that's everything. The only thing we're missing is power, 24 volts and 12 volts, and an audio input. All right, well, let's go ahead and get power hooked up here. So we've got our 24 volts coming in on this line here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and put ground over here and then 12 volts onto this, uh, this power rail over here. And then let's get our input hooked up. And I've got a RCA cable that I've just kind of cut apart and made an input out of here. So we'll just go ahead and hook that up like so. And then that output is uh, just being uh, driven by my, my old cell phone here. And uh, it's uh, having a little bit of issue. It seems to think that it's always placing a phone call when it just should be playing music. But uh, there's a reason that you're an old cell phone and not a current cell phone. Uh, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and hit play on this. And then let's flip the switch. And as the tubes warm up, we should hear some sound coming out of that. So let's, let's give that a shot. Yes, yes, there it goes. Awesome. Oh my God, let's make it sound. I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear it. Let me get the microphone a little closer. That is absolutely epic. I'm, it, it works. We have a working audio amplifier and it was incredibly easy to build, but it's, it's just, it's not very loud is the problem. And we, we knew that going into this. We knew that, you know, P equals VI. And so there was only so much power we could pull out of it with just 24 volts. And so I, I find myself sitting here looking at it, you know, feeling like Scotty from Engineering on Star Trek, where the captain's coming down and saying, we need more power. And I'm saying, I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. And then the young ensign comes up and says, if we reroute auxiliary power from life support into the main engines, we can get the extra 10% thrust we need. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, we got 24 volts. We got 12 volts. Let's reroute that 12 volts into the 24 volts. Bump it up to 36 volts. Let's give that a shot. There we go, there we go. Yeah, that's a bit more noise. All right, so essentially what we've done is we've set the, the ground right along here to minus 12 volts and since the actual ground is only actually being used for the heaters. This, this doesn't care. It's the same as having 36 volts on the plate and having ground be ground. So it's just like we have a virtual ground set at minus 12 volts. And so that gives us a, a little more juice. And actually, if, I think if we play this on the PC, we can make it even louder because cell phones are notoriously weak on their output. And so that's a, a healthy amount of noise. Now, I, I have some ideas about how to uh, make this even cooler, and, uh, and that has something to do with the fact that we're using these two tubes specifically, the BH7 and the B4A. Uh, but I think I'm going to save that for the next episode, uh, and I, I think I really want to build this onto a circuit board as well. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode, because we're going to expand this a little bit and play with it a little more. Uh, but, man, I'm just... I'm super happy with how it turned out. I don't know if you guys can hear it over me talking, but the, the audio quality is surprisingly good for what it is. It's just, ah, oh, it's so cool. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode because we're going to play with this some more, and uh, we'll see you then.